so much for the opportunity uh, to respond to such a fantastic lecture from uh, Professor Omotosho. Uh, I, I really feel uh, deeply honored to be uh, asked to, to do this. Um, but what a hard act to follow. Um, I thought it was absolutely fascinating and thought-provoking uh, exploration of what I suppose is often a quite complicated relationship between politics and literature, or of the common impulses which often lie behind them. Uh, the synergies expressed in relationships, friendships between writers and politicians, such as uh, Professor, Professor Amatosha indicated. But what also happens, I think, when this turns in on itself, when the nature of a particular society presses the two together, when you have a situation where the power of politics and the power of literature are in close alignment, and where you have somebody like Sol Pleinke, uh, as Professor Omotosho has shown us, uh, who perhaps more than anybody epitomizes and personifies this. I, I was intrigued, fascinated by the way that Professor Omotosho drew upon his own experiences, his own autobiography, uh, to show how this point was brought to him through the personal contact uh, that he had with, with many writers and, and political activists. Uh, both in South Africa and, and in Nigeria, and, and what a roll call it was. And how this made him aware of the differences between a, a struggle for independence, such as characterised much of formerly colonial Africa, and a struggle for the right to equal participation in a society, as in South Africa, and then a liberation struggle. But one that is concerned, as he argues, with the salvation of the oppressors as well as the oppressed. And I think that to me was, was perhaps the most intriguing and important insight of, uh, of Professor Omotosho's presentation. But for most of the 20th century, all black South Africans got were intensified forms of oppression and the kind of measures, uh, the legislation that Professor Omotosho spoke of. Um, and the kind of legislation that came with innocuous sounding titles. And I think if he'd have gone on, he would have probably have mentioned the extension of the Universities Act 1959, which I thought is perhaps appropriate to mention, given where we are at the moment. Uh, the effect of which was not to extend university uh, education, but I think to actually make it a criminal offence for black South Africans to be registered at a uh, supposedly white university. And then Professor Amatosho moved on to Sol Pleinke, uh, the writer, political leader, par excellence. And in particular, a key decision that he had to make, whether or not to accept the presidency of the South African Native National Congress in 1917. And Pleinke declined. Well, and we know the reasons he gave for this, and Professor Omotosho spelled them out. And maybe this is an instance of the tensions that can arise between being both a writer and a politician, and that sometimes something has to give. Was it that Pleinke saw himself more as an individual spokesman, one who would be free to give expression to the prophetic vision which Professor Omotosho pointed to? So as well as synergies between writers and, and politics and politicians, in other words, I think there could also be tensions and dissonance. Now, all of this raises uh, a huge range of issues, and I hope that uh, some of these can inform the deliberations that we have uh, during the next three days of this conference. Uh, and of course, I'm very grateful to Professor Omotosha for having raised such a, a wide range of issues for us to, to address. I, I just wanted to, to pick out uh, three of those. Um, the first was the question of motivation. Um, what is it that impels political leaders and writers to come forward? Now, I'm sure that love of their people, as Professor Omotosha suggests, is a very powerful factor, but I wonder if there were other things too. 
a desire for fame, perhaps, or fulfilment, or just a wish to make your voice heard. Now, I'd be very interested to know Professor Armitage's thoughts on that, and if we accept that that, is, that, if that that is possible, that that is likely, maybe we should be prepared to refine a bit the, hero, the heroic narratives that have tended to accompany struggles for liberation. And in doing so, perhaps to pay a bit more attention to those who made possible the emergence of writers and political leaders like Sol Pleike, and particularly in his case, uh, his wife Elizabeth, uh, of whom I think perhaps uh, far too little has been heard. Being both writer and political leader did not leave a lot of time for anything else, and certainly required extensive support and backup. Uh, again, as Professor Omotosha acknowledges, both politicians and writers sacrifice even their families in the process of caring for their people and in service to them. I think Sol Pleike uh, and his family were probably a, a prime instance of that. So I think in the process of liberation there was a fair amount of collateral damage that I think uh, it's right for us to, to remember. And I think in, in the case of Sol Pleike, it is Sol Pleike's family and his children, as well as Sol Pleike himself, that I, I think uh, we should be remembering. Secondly, a uh, second kind of broader set of issues, I think there's a, there's a question of the context in which writers function. I was intrigued by Professor Omotosho's statement that the large number of writer politicians in South Africa was partly the reason why the salvation of both the oppressed and the oppressor became a major issue in the struggle for the liberation of South Africa. But as Professor Omotosho implies, there were other factors involved too. And I wonder if it might be fruitful uh, if we get time later on during the conference to explore what some of those might have been. For example, uh, the many things that black and white South Africans had in common, which you might argue dictated the terms on which these writer politicians operated. The histories of interaction between black and white, uh, interdependence, a shared religion, shared languages, some shared cultural values. And perhaps it was also the case that there were so many writer politicians because there was so much to talk about. The, the third issue I, I'd like to raise in, 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 in responding to um, Professor Omotosho's lecture was the question of language. Uh, Professor Omotosho ended by saying that in the end, Kleike opted for literature, that he concentrated on his work on Swana and the translations of the plays of William Shakespeare. So here he is addressing Botswana, speakers of Setswana. He's not concerned with those people he had previously addressed in English, oppressors included. So I wonder what we are to make of this. Does this represent a withdrawal from politics? Or is it a recognition that there was a, a longer campaign to be fought? That the cultural survival of his people was a higher priority than fighting what was, in the short term at least, a losing political battle. And more generally, where the question of language, I suppose one could say, the power of language fits in with the power of politics and the power of literature. So those were just my few uh, additional thoughts. Uh, as I, I, I read and listened to uh, Professor Omotosha's wonderful um, lecture, which I, I, I feel has got this conference up to such a, a fantastic start. So thank you again for the opportunity to respond. Uh, and thank you above all to Professor Omotosho for such a, a, an inspiring lecture. Thank you very much.